Hey robot makers, let's have a play with the Pimeroni Grow Kit. I have both the Chili Kit and the Herb Kit. It was on special offer and I couldn't resist. So let's take a closer look. So I opted for the Chili Kit. There is also this Herb Kit as well as an alternative. You can also get both of course. There's some wires there, they're the grow kit cables. There's the hat itself, what it looks like. And that's gonna go on our Raspberry Pi Zero. So I'll need to attach some headers to this one so that we can attach that to there, but I've got some headers. These are the sensors. Let's have a take a look at these. So there we go, there's the soil sensors. Packaging there, and then of course we have chilies. Let's open up this. So inside each we have a little pot. There's the pellet for the soil, and then there's a packet of seeds. So let's have a look at each of the seeds. So it just says generic chili on that one there. This one says Serrano, and this one is jalapeno, my favourite. And let's have a look in the herb kit. So in the herb kit we have another three sets of pots. So this one has rosemary, this one has basil, and then finally, just keep, keep it out there, this one is coriander. So I think I'm going to connect up these sensors to the chili kit. That's, that's the one I think I'm going to, to use with these. So I have previously purchased some soil sensors. These ones have just got two prongs on them and two pins at the top, one pin for each prong. And you're just gonna measure the resistance between the two prongs to detect the moisture level. I've got a whole bunch of these. So let's see how these compare to the, the Pimeroni ones. So obviously these are a lot smaller and the Pimeroni ones a lot larger, but also a lot narrower. They've not got quite as much width to them. And these also have a couple of chips on them there and a connector to make it a bit easier to connect. I'm also guessing we just snap these off to use them individually. So according to the Pimroni website, these are resistive moisture sensors and these ones are capacitive moisture sensors. And the difference between the two is these will eventually corrode the water, the moisture in the, the soil will actually etch away at the electrodes there. Whereas on these ones, because it's capacitive touch, these ones are completely sealed and therefore won't be susceptible to erosion and corrosion. So taking a closer look at this hat, it's actually got six connectors on it. I thought it only had three when I first looked at this. So it's got the three there for the, the soil sensors. But on the flip side, we've also got another one, P1, P2 and P3, and it says these are for pump. So I'm assuming that's to be able to pump some water into the pots. We've also got a really nice little display there and four sets of push buttons. So we've got A, B, X and Y. Looking at this closer as well, I can see that there's also a light sensor on there too. You can see what the light levels are currently. So I've got these nice header pins that I'm going to attach to the Raspberry Pi Zero. And you can see they've got colour coding there. The reds are for the 5 volts and we've got the blacks for the grounds. So these make it really easy to know where your pins are. So next up, we need to flash the storage card with the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS and then download the code in it and set up the zero. So over here on the desktop, I'm gonna to go to the Raspberry Pi imager and I'm gonna flash the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS to this Raspberry Pi zero. So I can actually use the 64-bit version. Let's go and find that. So we want the 64-bit version, perfect. And then the storage device is the 62 gig version. And then I'm just gonna click on the little advanced option there and let's give this a name. So let's call this one GrowHat01. So I'm gonna enable SSH. I'm gonna set my username as being Kev and I've got a password that's default in there. I'm just gonna update that. And I've got my usual wireless LAN connections and so on. So that looks good to me. I'm gonna save that and then I'm going to write that. So yes. 
So I'll pause and I'll come back once this is finished. Okay, so that's finished writing to the SD card. We can now plop that inside the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and continue our setup. I've also got a few standoffs that we can use just to give this a bit more rigidity. So I've got a little pack of screws there and I've got a couple of standoffs as well that we can add to this just to be nice and sturdy when it's on there. So I'm now going to connect to the freshly set up Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. So I know what the IP address of this is. So let me just type this in. So it's no longer Pi is the default username. So I've just used my name for this. Okay. Yep. Recognizes that this is a new device and it hasn't got the fingerprint saved. So let's just type in the password and away we go. Okay. So I've got the script in my clipboard here. So it's just curl space dash lowercase s uppercase sl and then https colon backslash backslash get.pymroney.com slash grow and then we pipe in that into bash so if i run that it'll now install the software i love how it says be careful to run scripts that you've found on the internet <laughs> but i think uh, pymroney is a trusted source so i think we'll be fine with that i hope okay once again i'm probably going to pause this bit or essentially fast forward it because this might take quite a while <laughs> finish this by pressing yes and install it as a service and then we're pretty much ready to go it says if this is the first time you're installing this you should reboot so there we go we've got a prompt to reboot press yes it'll disconnect me from this terminal session but i can reconnect in a couple of seconds time and now i can see we have a new display on our grow hat mini so you can hear that it's going beep 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 and that's because the sensor number two is not working, sensor number three, because nothing's plugged in at the moment. And we can see some of the readings there on a little graph, and that's going along in time. let's plug in the sensors I'm just going to unplug the Raspberry Pi Zero I have shut this down first and I'm going to take these cables and I'm going to plug each one into a pot it does say to be careful on these so I can see the pins are there that's the first one that's going to go into the first pot which is the Serrano and the second one and finally the last cable is going in the cayenne pepper so let's plug this back in so here we are, we finally booted back up and I've got the Grow Hat Mini here and all three sensors are connected up. I'm not sure why the third sensor is not reading any, any settings. I'm sure I can troubleshoot that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button here and this is going to cycle through the menu so I can see the saturation is 100% on the first one. I can see on the second one it's also 100 and then the third one it's showing 100 but it's actually showing a graph there. And we can also see that there's a little alarm button here and we can enable that or disable that. It will automatically disable the alarm if it senses that it's night time and that there's no light uh, it won't make the alarm go off so, so you're not here at the beep 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 sound if there's an issue at night time but as soon as you wake up in the morning as soon as there is some light it'll start beeping away and tell you that these plants need desperately watering and for you to do that so now it's time to put this in place i need to put this on a hot windowsill so that the chilies have got a really good chance of uh, germinating and growing i'll post an update on this sometime later so what i'm going to do next is edit the python code and send the data to my mqtt broker and then that's going to be picked up by a node red instance that I've got running it works the exact same way as the weather station which is just over there it's going to take the, those readings send them on via a node red node red is going to pick those settings up send them to an influx db which is a database for time series data and then we can graph that data in grafana so that's what I'm planning to do next just tweaking the code to a little bit of uh, mqtt goodness so I hope you enjoyed this short video and I shall see you next time bye for now